Hi everybody, we're heading back to the woods again today. I see that Elena sure looks a lot different. The trucker came yesterday and took four loads out of here. And he said that there's probably another load of pallets here. Half a load of better quality logs and then probably three or four more loads of firewood down there. So we've only got a few more few more weeks maybe even days of logging left in here before it breaks up so I'm gonna push hard to, to get a little bit more out in that period of time so anyways we'll talk as we go along as soon as I get up into the woods I want to talk about my logging cart and explain a bunch of things about that okay so this is a cart I've had for over 40 years this is this is made out of some axle uh, I was told years ago is probably made out of an old Dodge axle and uh, as you can see, it's about, I don't know, less than two feet, probably uh, 20 inches off the ground in the center there. And uh, I have, I used to have old tires on it and I ran old tires for years, but a few years ago I had, I needed new tires. So I ended up buying brand new tires. And these are the three rib tires that go on the front of tractors. And I really like them a lot. Uh, they just seem to hold um, straight better because of the ribs and uh, they work really good so that is that um, so what we have on this cart it is set up as you can see quite high in other words the evener here is quite high off the ground a lot of your wagons and so many other implements that you that you hit your horses onto your evener will be way down low this is hitched up high because the purpose of it high is you have to to drag out logs if you have a high hitch which i have here the chains themselves go up high onto this drawbar and by doing that when you're when you have a chain around a log and it's a tight hitch to that log when you pull because it is so high, it will automatically lift that front end of the log just a little bit off the ground. I'll try to show that maybe even in this video, how it lifts just a tiny little bit. And it's enough that when you hit a rock or stump or, you know, something in the trail, it will, it may be, it might stop for just a second, but it will pop up over those things. It works really good. I have... I have been dubbed up on this. I remember a few years ago, a friend of mine came in to, to watch log and I said, I was kind of bragging about how, well, not really bragging, but s explaining how, you know, it just basically never gets caught on anything, stumps or rocks. And didn't I head out with that hitch and we got stuck really bad. And so I had to do a lot of fooling around to get it off that stump. But anyways, generally, generally. It works really good and, and does not get stuck on things. But because that hitch is so high, your evener hitch has to be high also. If this hitch was down there, when you pulled with your chains off that high of a hitch, what's going to happen is that pole is just going to come right up between their ears. I mean, it's going to come right up out of the, you know, up high. So that's why you have to have this hitch like this so that when they pull, it's going to actually um, keep the tongue where it should be. Because of that setup, that high tongue, high hitch point, it's awful hard on horses because it puts a lot of weight on the neck, a lot of weight on the end of that pole. So that quite often would mean that weight would be on their neck. This is one more reason why I use a D-ring harness, which I've explained in several other videos. Um, that helps put, instead of having the, all the weight on the neck, a lot of it will be on their back. So it distributes the weight so much better from when they're pulling. Because when they're pulling, they're actually pulling, putting down pressure on the end of that tongue. So it's all the more important, in my opinion, to have the D-ring harnesses to work when you're using a logging cart that is made this way. So on my logging cart, I have, when I go to the woods, I will carry 
my gas and oil with me. I have uh, my file and, and wrenches with me. Um, sometimes when I actually get to the woods, I'll take them off. Sometimes I leave them right on. Um, I have lost them by leaving them on, but uh, that is a risk you have to take. I quite often will have an extra wedge here just because it's a good spot to hang it. Um, my chainsaw goes right here in this scabboard that I made that works quite well. I have a can't hook here, which I really like having, but by having it sticking out like that, I have had issues with breaking the handles. And you can see this one's already been cracked. I should get some black tape and tape it up good before it gets worse. I generally log with three chains and I try to have a slip hook on one end of the chain and a grab hook on the other end of the chain. This chain here does not have a grab hook on the end, but it does have a good slip hook. And these are good heavy duty logging slip, uh, slip hooks. This is a uh, um, 5 16 chain, which is what I use. Um, and I also have my logging tong that I carry with me, which I really like. Um, I don't use them all the time, but when I have a tree that I can't, like especially when there's a lot of snow and you can't get the chain around the log after you drop it on the ground without a lot of work, I can just use my log and tongs and pull it out with that. A lot of times when I'm doing that, I would pull out just a, a ways and, and when the end of the log is in the air, I would stop and put a chain on it because I feel the chain is more secure than the logging tongs, although they work great too. So, but anyways, um, I have a release on this car also I want to show you. And a lot of people will, when they're pulling out a log, they'll find a knoll or a little bit of a hill and they'll shorten the chains up really a lot so that the the end of the log is off the ground. But when you do that, when you get to landing, you can't unhitch your chain unless you have some sort of a release. I have done that before, but I really feel that it just puts so much more tongue weight on your cart and it makes it kind of sway a lot. So I actually don't do that very often. I feel that just a nice tight hitch here is really all you need to lift that log enough so you don't get snubbed up. Raising it does make it pull easier, but uh, it just to me causes other issues. So I don't do that that often. So most of the time when I get to landing, I can just back up and I hitch my chain. And when you back up hard, the tongue will go in the air. And when that goes in the air, this tips just a tiny little bit so it makes it easier to unhitch up. But the release is really nice at times. Um, let me set up my camera and I will show you how that release works. I'll try to show you again when I have a log on it if I happen to have one that needs it. Okay, this is my release. This cart was not made with this release originally. It just had this, the original drawbar, which is right here. So I have, I think, four notches on this original drawbar. But I decided to make this release on it. And I had an, a, a, a guy um, right here in town that spent a long time figuring out how to do this. And he would come up with this um, type of uh, cam, I think you call it some, I don't know what it's called. But it, it works to release this and it stays in place. This is the back part is the is the release. So anyways, so you're going down and you get the landing and you can't unhitch your load. You just pull this here and that will flip around like that. So it allows the chains to come off. One problem I do have on this particular cart, and I used to have it set up differently, but a lot of times when they're, when this is coming around, the chains will drop into the notches of the original drawbar and get caught. I used to have a little piece of steel across all of those just so they wouldn't drop in place and they've fallen out over time. But anyways, 
I just have to realize that and deal with it. But that's how that works. Um, it's not as fancy as some of your newer carts. And it's probably not even made as well. But uh, it definitely does work. And maybe I can even come out with a log and show you how that works. So when you're done and has dropped your load already, just a matter of pushing this down and this will just snap. And this will just snap into place like that. And it's never released on its own. I've always had to pull that. One problem I do have sometimes if it's a really heavy, heavy log, this does not pull very good, easy. But if I take the can't hook to just pull it with that, it will, uh, it will snap right free and release the log. So that's how that works. The seed is just a two by six bolted on and I have a little piece of plastic and some, a little piece of uh, cushion and some plastic over the top of that. I wish I need to redo that so I have a little bit more cushion here towards the end. Um, but it's very simple. I have a very good way of moving the cart from job to job. And if you'd seen some of my videos, I have to have a video showing moving it. Years ago, I would just put it in my pickup, but it's pretty heavy. So two of us would lift in the pickup and, and we basically just roll it out of the pickup and we break the two by six once in a while. But um, basically it's I shouldn't say it's indestructible, but it's a pretty rugged cart. Another thing that's very, very important on a cart, and I've had it on this one ever since I've, it came with it, um, is a bumper. This is so important. When you're going down the trail with the log, and without this all here, this is all open through here, and it's so inch easy to have the cart slide or something and then a for example a small tree you know like four or five inches trees would slide right into here and then you're in trouble whereas with this you you slide into tree it'll hit that as a bumper and just push you away okay so that is the logging cart itself the tongue is such that all it does is slide into this pipe. Um, I've had made some videos on replacing that tongue before that you could look up and, and see what I mean. But this pipe is, it's when I break a pole, which happens sometimes, it's simple enough to just uh, find a tree in the woods, cut it down and make it so it's small enough and slide it right into that piece of pipe. And up here, I'm gonna show you the neck yoke, the design on this tongue for the neck yoke. This is what I call God's design for to hold the neck yoke on. It's just a limb here and it's amazing. I've had many, many, many poles with this type of a setup. And of all the years, you'd think that limb would break free but in all the years i've done this i don't know maybe maybe one or two of these limbs have over time broken so i've had to replace the pole it's just amazing how strong a limb is on a small tree like this so anyways that's it on the cart the basics of the cart anyways um at some time i want to explain some of the pros and cons of using a cart. When I first got this cart 40 years ago, I was young and uh, I would flip this cart over two or three times a day. That sounds like an exaggeration, but it's not. I would really literally flip this cart over. So, but I think that's a whole nother video. I'll explain that some other time. Okay, I got my first tree cut as a big old basswood and I swung in here to get turned around on the lower trail I have here to get it out of here. And when I was turning around, I pulled up where the horses were and then I backed down here and back down into that mass. And 
we have this tiny little tree right there. And as I backed in here and tried to swing over, the pole of the cart was going to hit that tree. So in the process, they were hitting that junk back there and really twisting hard on the pole. And I actually could hear it crack. Now, this is a pole I've made, oh, a month or so ago. And I kind of hurriedly made it because oh, I was just in a hurry that day. So, um, and it's not, it's a yellow birch. It's not the type of pole I really like. What I like is a hard hack pole. So anyways, the pole is fine. Uh, it's, it should last for a while still, of course. But in the process of um, logging, I always am kind of keeping my eye open for a nice pole, and I just happened to see one. So as you can see, we got that nice basswood there that we're hitched onto, ready to go. But I was looking up here, and there is a hardhack tree. The right diameter looks pretty darn straight and has a limb up there at just about the right length to make a perfect pole. So I am going to take advantage of that, cut it down, take it out with me and leave it on the landing. So in case while I'm up here in the next few weeks, if I happen to, to break that pole, because you just never know, we have a spare ready to slap right in place. So that's great. So I'll cut that and take that out and also hitch on to this good sized basswood. I think it's about 25 feet long. This three eight footers. And we'll pull that out of there. Okay, so I pulled that tree, the butt, away from the top, but I realized that if I tried to pull it, we're getting a bind because they're not going to be swing around this corner. So what I'm going to do is put a good rolling hitch on this, put the chain over there, and Hopefully it will go through there before hitting that maple. If it does hit the maple, I'm going to have to put a special hitch on it to go around that to protect that maple. Um, but I think it'll, I think it'll go all right. So let's try. Oh, 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 
So as you can see, we've lifted up quite a bit on this spot that we came through. I'm going to shorten up my chain and that will give it a lot of extra lift. So as you can see, that log is off the ground four inches. And like I said earlier, I actually don't do this that often, but it does make it pull a little bit easier. But uh, um, to me, it's just, I just don't like to do it. But anyways, let me explain how that works though. So I'm gonna give you one more look at this. You'll see just happen to be where we are. It's actually close to the ground right there. But when I asked them to go, you just watch how high that log goes off the ground. And that will happen whether you're hitched high or hitched low. Um, so just watch. Okay, so I'm on the landing and my chain is so tight, there's no way in the world I can get it off. Um, I also have, and this somewhat makes it worse, I have a hitch to pull something with right here. I also have one up here. But I have one down here, and a lot of times if I, if I try to get these logs tight, they will actually get caught underneath here instead of staying right to the back, which even complicates things and makes it worse. So this is another reason why I don't try to get them too tight. But anyways, I can't release that, so I'm gonna have to use the release to do that. So I gotta make sure my chains that are through here aren't gonna get caught on the old original notches. So I'll make sure they're out of the way enough. Like I said, I actually very rarely use this. And sometimes even like right here, this chain here has come around and it could be caught on this log right here. So when I released it, it would only go as far as it would have let it, let it go because of this chain. So I gotta make sure that's all out of the way. And now I will release it. camera might fall down I don't know and on my cart because there's so much pressure on it, I can't actually pull that now I know a lot of you guys will say well get a better setup because this will not pull out easily so and the newer ones that are made they I'm sure they work great but uh, uh, sometimes when you're used to something you just stick with it because it works works great for you. So anyways, with my can't arc I can release it. Now I can take it off. Very simple. Push it all back together like that. We're done. Ready to roll for another hitch. Okay, that's it for this morning. We're gonna head out and take a small load out with us. Then after lunch, we'll probably use the dry and haul some of this stuff out of here. It's really starting to warm up. And uh, I'm a little bit concerned about my trail. This time of year, I always have to be concerned because it's so wet out there. I have to start breaking up 
I need to get my logs out of here and my excavator out of here before it goes bad. So I watch the weather really close. But I think we're all right for another week or so. Although this weekend is supposed to be up into like 45. But anyways, just want to show you a few of the stuff I brought out today this morning. Not the greatest of stuff. That means that maple right there. See the base on that, not too good. But hopefully there'll be some decent logs up in there. And just a bit of odds and ends. As you can see, it's it's a lot of junk in here. And there's some good stuff though, don't get me wrong. But it seems like this year I've been cutting a lot of the junk. Of course I have to cut whatever's marked. And uh, but uh, we we take whatever's marked and and uh, go from there. So anyways. I'm not gonna complain. I'm, I'm happy with how this lot's been going. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video about my cart. And if you have any questions, by all means, ask them in the comments below and I'll try to answer you. Um, okay, have a great day.